how to find and buy cheap houses from the comfort of your home. That's the topic for today's episode. And without further ado, let's dive in. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode at Nova Rice Invest. If this is your first time tuning into this channel, well, let me tell you that this is your channel for real estate education. So today's episode, it's a very long overdue episode that a lot of you have been waiting for. Today's episode is meant to complement two videos that I've launched a couple of weeks ago. One is to not buy houses today. And the other one is one about how you can prepare for the real estate market downturn that is about to come. But most importantly, this video doesn't only complement that this video, it's going to help you to prepare way into the future, regardless of whether you're experiencing a pandemic or whatever economical situation you could be facing. So without further ado, let's just go straight into my computer so you can learn all there is about finding cheap houses. All right. So we're in my computer now, and this is how we're going to find all of these amazing deals. We're going to leverage a site called foreclosure.com. But before we dive into any of these stuff, let's take a step back and I want you to go over a couple of concepts that are extremely important for your learning with today's episode. So what we're going to do is just to pay close attention to uh, the next couple of lights that I am about to cover. Uh, I know you're very eager to learn. You want to probably fast forward and learn all about the nitty gritties of the platform in itself, but it is extremely important that you understand what goes behind the scene of uh, anything that has to to do with the stages of a foreclosure. Now, there are four stages right here. Uh, some of them are actually lumped them together. Some of them are actually separated them, but it's very important that you pay attention to this, right? Because the way a foreclosure is going to work out, it follows this timeline that you see here. So it starts off with the pre-foreclosure, followed by a short sale, then by an auction, and then uh, the actual foreclosure in itself. Now, you might be wondering, what does it matter? Isn't that the same thing? No, they're not the same thing. And here's why. When you are at this stage, somewhere between the preferred closure and the short sale, you have better chances of finding a house in good conditions. Uh, I like to call those a pretty houses uh, because they're not lender owned yet. Why is that important? Well, at this point, uh, for the most part, let's say the homeowner was most likely to be still uh, be residing in the house and therefore they could still be taking care of the property. Uh, they're trying to work things out with the lenders and stuff like that. So more or less, there are going to be less repairs, right? As you move along all the way to the right, then once the houses hit that foreclosure stage, uh, you will most likely find houses that will require a lot of renovation. The what I like to call the not so pretty houses. Why? Because there's an emotional component to it, right? People uh, have been forced out of their properties. And at this point, more or less, they want to get back to the lenders. They're probably thinking, well, I gave all my savings and I did what I could to you know, care for this house and now you want to take it away from me. So you know what, if I can have it, you won't have it either. So let me just destroy everything that comes my way so that it hurts you even more, right? So once it gets to the point where the property becomes lender owned, there is more labor that's going to come from you in terms of getting the house um, all fixed up and getting it all pretty again. And therefore it will not only require a lot of work from you, but also some level of experience experience uh, for you to be able to get the property nicely fixed and ready to go. Now that you are very well aware of this, let's jump into the nitty gritty and the fun stuff. Okay, so we're back to the website. And what I want to do is first do a quick zoom in so you can better see what we have. So as you can see, we have uh, the website here. Once again, this is foreclosure.com. And before we start doing any of our research, I want you to first get familiarized with what the website has to offer. So remember what I talked about, the stages of foreclosure. So we have the pre-foreclosure here, short sales, uh, share sales, and foreclosure. So in this episode, in particular, we're going to focus on the pre-foreclosure, the short sales, and of course, the foreclosure. And as you can see, this site, it's available for all 50 states. So regardless of where you live, it's going to 
be able to provide you with the information that you need, depending on the area that you're interested in investing, or you could also be purchasing for um, your first home, right? And as you scroll down, you will see that they have some recommendations based on the area where you live in. So as you know, this is a website and uh, what they do is that they leverage your location, your physical location, depending on the area where you're actually visiting the website and they provide certain recommendations. So that way uh, you don't have to go that far. Maybe you're interested in investing in properties behind your backyard. So this is one way to go about it. Me personally, I live in New York. So what they're doing is they're recommending places or properties nearby uh, the area where I live in New York City. So you have a house here in Paramus, New Jersey. You have them in Oyster Bay all the way out in Long Island. Uh, you have them in Brick and Massapequa. So in the event that you happen to be visiting foreclosure.com at the same time you're watching this video, you will see that there's going to be a change here and uh, the recommended houses within your area. So now that you know this, let's say you want to explore something um, in Texas because there's a lot of noise around Texas and how it is a great state to invest. So you have two choices to do this. One is by simply hovering over the map or you just simply go into top cities or you can just simply type in the zip code where you're actually interested in investing for demonstration purposes. So what I'm going to do is just to hit straight on the map. So that way you can go straight into whatever is it that it's available in Texas. So once again, you have uh, the listings of the different stages of the property that you have. So in the state of Texas, these are all the counties that appear in foreclosure.com. And then here on the left, you're going to see the number of houses or properties that are available at the pre-foreclosure state, at the short sale, at the sheriff sale, and at the foreclosure state as well. And then as you scroll down, you are going to see uh, the different numbers based on the area. So Back to this map, I was actually doing a bit of research yesterday uh, just so I could prepare better for uh, what I'm about to show you in this episode. And I was actually navigating the area of Galveston. I visited Galveston a couple of years ago and I thought it was quite interesting to uh, check this out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna scroll down here and you can either search by city or search by county. We talked about Galveston, so I'm gonna just change the uh, search into the county tab, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on whatever is available in Galveston. And as you can see, you have a bunch of listings right here. You can actually choose whether you want to find them in foreclosure or if you want to find them in the pre-foreclosure state. So uh, for the sake of this exercise, let's just check on the pre-foreclosure state. Why? Because once again, we want beautiful houses. We want uh, houses that will require the minimum amount of renovation as possible. So now we have a couple of uh, listings right here that are at the pre-foreclosure state. And let's say I'm actually curious to check out this one in, in Lake City, which is um, one of the properties that I was actually checking out last night. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and click and view the details. And as you can see, you kind of get a bit of a sneak peek into what they have to offer in terms of information. It also shows you where in the foreclosure timeline they are, whether they are in, you know, pre foreclosure or at the auction stage or whether they have been repossessed by the bank and at this point become a foreclosure your property, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account in order for you to access to this type of information. You do have to create an account with them. And we are very glad to announce that we have become affiliated to foreclosure.com. We do get a commission based on the signups that we get through the videos that we create, which help us a lot uh, tremendously to continue to create this type of content and make this information readily available for you. Uh, and it also supports the the company so they can continue to gather this type of information and make it readily available for you. In fact, they actually do update the site on a daily basis. So uh, for the most part, you will get the most accurate information as possible. Once again, they do update the site every single day. That doesn't mean they update every single posting every day, but don't worry about that because I'm eventually going to walk you through how to see whether the information is um, the latest up to date as possible. So let's go ahead and sign in. And here we go. So we're already signed in. And as you can see, everything has been unlocked. So here's the address of the property. 
and you have some of the pictures. Because this is in pit for closure, you more or less won't have uh, chances to see what the inside looks like uh, because either the property owner might still be residing in there or they just simply haven't gotten that information readily available. But what I want you to truly pay attention to is how this website becomes a one-stop shop for you. Now, a lot of you might wonder, well, uh, there's a video that you released last year that talked about other websites such as HUD.com or HomePath.com. How is it any different from Foreclosure.com? So Foreclosure.com is in fact, uh, think of it as the Google. It's like the yellow pages for all kinds of properties uh, that are either in pre-foreclosure or in auction. This is a one-stop shop repository where you can come in and find pretty much everything you like. HomePath.com, HUD.com, all of the information that you will find in those websites are actually pulled together and presented to you in one single platform in here, uh, in foreclosure.com. So now I want you to pay attention to the amount of money that, um, you know, they're requiring in this case and the auction, because this is the stage where we're at and the analytics that you can see here. So this house has been auctioned at 150,686, but the market value of this property is at 175,800. So this is just a range and is an analytic, and it also gives you an approximation of what the rent value it's going to be. So this will definitely help you save time in terms of not having to look into multiple websites, multiple repositories in order to find out, uh, hey, how much can I rent this property for in the event that you are looking to rent out or in the event that you just simply want to get an estimated number so that you can see what exactly are you walking yourself into. Then on the picture side, there is one thing that I actually love the most about all of this. This entire website is excellent, but look at this. Check in the map, right? Look at the analytics that appear here. So you will see, you know, an average all the way on the right and this box that will give you the lowest range and the highest range. But if you want to find out about the specifics of how much can you actually sell this property for, let's say you pay 150,000 in the auction, this after you fix it up, assuming there's not much to fix it up, this is the range that all of these properties are worth around this area. So it's pretty close on the higher end. You have a property worth 188,000 on the lower end. We're talking about 142. Um, so it's within the ballpark. Actually, uh, 203 is actually the highest worth. Well, we even have 272,000 over here. So that gives you a sense of direction, whether you want to purchase this property to fix it up and rent it or fix it up and um, just simply flip it and sell it to another homeowner, or perhaps you're in the market looking for a property for yourself. Uh, that's the beauty about this website. What I like so much about it is that it tackles all kinds of different needs, whether you're a real estate investor or whether you're actually a homeowner looking for a property that you can add your personal touch and turn that into yours. Now, back to the pictures and scrolling down. So now into the foreclosure timeline, uh, this is why it was so important uh, to put some emphasis into the earlier slide because this will help you understand where in this timeline this house is currently situated at and uh, once again is at the auction. And here's where you will find the details, right? So back in April 2014, the owner of the property was served a notice of liens pendants for missed mortgage payments, right? So apparently they got all of that resolved and now you fast forward uh, six years down the road. Now we're at November 13, 2020. Now this notice announces the date, time, and other details related to a proposed public foreclosure auction. So somewhere down here, we will eventually find the date for an auction. And that's where you can find that right here. So the auction date for this property, it's going to be held on January 5th, 2021 at 10 o'clock at this address right here. And so you can actually, you know, decide, hey, this is one of those properties that I want to look into because I already done the proper research, or maybe I'm pretty familiar with the area and I know what the houses are worth over here. Maybe there's a lot of demand uh, right now for this area because, hey, people are moving away from uh, big cities and they're looking for more suburban areas. Whatever the reason is that um, your research has led you to believe that this is the right property for you to invest, now you have all of that important information. And if this is not enough for you to see the value of this website, this website is not just simply a one-stop shop for you to come in and uh, check out the properties that are readily available. They also have tools 
for you to leverage in your preparation to invest in this type of property. So as you can see here on the far right, let's just expand this a little bit more. So here are the first steps to buying a foreclosure property, right? So buying a pre foreclosure, read more and voila, look at everything that appears in here that could help you to better prepare and not blindly walk into one of these deals, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to expect, right? So foreclosure status means the owner of the property has defaulted on his mortgage obligation and the lender seeking steps to foreclosure. Once again, this is where you can find the amazing, beautiful looking houses, the pretty looking houses where you can come in just to add slightly a bit of your personal touch and make it readily available either for rent or for sale or maybe even for you, right? And then as you read along, uh, you will find the steps in your search that is going to help you get the most out of your adventure or your experience. Then as you continue to scroll down, you will find even more resources somewhere down here, right? So you can uh, learn all about foreclosure homes in Texas. You can learn all about bankruptcy laws and then any glossaries, foreclosure laws. So as you can see, this is amazing. How to buy a foreclosure. You can learn about the basic steps to purchasing a pre-foreclosure or any basic steps that you will need to be aware of when you are buying a property and at an auction sale. So all in one stop shop, right? Same thing with the foreclosure laws. Uh, as you know, they vary per state. We have 50 states here. So depending on where you're looking to invest or where you're actually residing, the laws are actually quite different from one state to another. So make sure you come in very well prepared and take a look at all the readings. Um, you can't really ask for more. This is a very complete website. It shows you everything that you need to know and also will help you learn anything about the glossary. So you can learn all about the real estate language, the foreclosure closure language that will be beneficial for you to be aware of. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight when you are dealing with pre foreclosure or even foreclosure houses, it is very important that you pay attention to the redemption period. Why is that important? So we're going to come here into the glossary and look into the R and the redemption period. So that way you can see what that means. So a redemption period is the amount of time given to a foreclosed borrower to effectuate the use of the statutory right to redemption and reclaim the property after the payment of all defaulted sums, costs, and fees. What does that mean for you? It means that you have to pay close attention to the redemption period and the state that you're investing in because the last thing you want is to buy a foreclosure property, fix it up, make it all nicely, only to find out that the owner of the house came back and, hey, I was able to pull all the money. I want to buy my house back with all the fixtures that you already provided. You definitely don't want to do that. How do you make sure that you are either at the ending stage of the redemption period or how do you work around that? Well, that's why your power team is extremely important. In this case, working with a good title agency and also a good real estate attorney so that they can both complement one another and also guide you through this experience of investing in a foreclosure property. And one thing to notice before I forget mentioning uh, keep in mind that foreclosure.com, once again, it, it's kind of like the yellow pages. It's kind of like Google. What they do is that they're a one-stop shop and they just collect, they pull all this information uh, available in the web and all of these other repositories. So that way you don't have to maneuver around and go through multiple websites to try and find this information. So their role in this, it's only to provide the information really available for you. They don't work as a mediator of anything that you do here. It is actually your responsibility to make sure you work with the right experts to make sure that all the issues with the title or all the issues with the property is actually taken care of. What foreclosure.com uh, is doing right here is just basically presenting this information for you as well as us and Novavice. What we're doing is just basically making you aware of the existing of this website so that you can actually come in and check out this information yourself. But uh, we're not directly related to um, all the deals that are really available in this website. And we especially don't source uh, these houses uh, to make the those available for you. Now, back to the other slide. Another thing that I wanted to highlight for you uh, in terms of resources is uh, this feature right here. Where is it? I was looking at it last night. They have a document center right here. So investing in foreclosure, get a title search and download documents. So uh, a document center, as you scroll down, you will see 
all kinds of different checklists that is going to help you. Hey, if you're buying into a foreclosure checklist, click here. If you are buying one of these properties for you to use as your home, then check this out. And uh, when you're doing a home tour, what are some of the things that you need to pay attention to? So here you go, buying foreclosure, right? So these are all the items that you need to be paying the closest attention to. And here's your checklist readily available for you to use if you're looking to buy this. So you can use this as your primary home, your primary residence. There you go. Here's a checklist that you can definitely leverage to help you make sure that you got everything ready and good to go. And now over here, we have the house tour checklist, which provides you with a list of things that you should definitely pay attention to as you're doing a walkthrough in the house, because sometimes as homeowners, uh, even as real estate investors, if this is our first time getting into the foreclosure arena, we can get carried away with the HGTV syndrome, right? You might see a house and you can start imagining, oh, this is how the kitchen is going to look like over here. Uh, this is how the beautiful bathroom is going to look like. And then the last thing you paid attention to was probably the roof or maybe some plumbing issues uh, that you truly need to pay attention to because those become quite expensive. And it's not something that you can see with the naked eye, right? Uh, issues with the plumbing uh, normally will require a specialist or having to tear down a wall to truly see the issue. So those are some of the things that you truly need to pay attention to um, and then inquire about them if you have the chance or the opportunity to visit the property. So hopefully this is really helpful. These are excellent tips and things to keep in mind. So now let's come back to the main site. Another thing that I want you to pay attention to. So let's say, for example, you are looking at this amazing site and you're checking out Texas, but you know what? You want to check some other stuff really available. So over here on the right, they have suggestions on properties that you can check out that are actually nearby where you live or nearby the area that you're actually checking out. So there is a suggestion here uh, nearby Lake City uh, over here in Texas. But look at the ones that you get to see here in Syracuse for some of the naysayers that don't believe, OK, hey, you know what? I can truly find a house for pennies on the dollars. You can actually check out whatever suggestions you see on the right over here. But let's say you didn't see anything that was interesting for you because, hey, over here, you're not interested in the area. Well, another way for you to find great deals, excellent deals, is by coming to this tab right here where it says cheap homes. And for the naysayers out there who don't believe or find it truly hard to believe to find uh, truly good cheap homes, look at everything that you can see here in this map. Like this map is swamp with uh, great uh, deals and you can actually come over here on the drop down and select, okay, what is your budget? Do you want to find a house under 60,000? Do you want to find a house under $10,000? So let's just go all in and find the cheapest property available and see what we can find. So now let's just check uh, a state like New York, right? Because we have a lot of people saying, hey, you cannot find good deals in New York because New York is ridiculously expensive. You will never find anything at $10,000. So, okay. We did the quick search and voila, look at all these houses for those naysayers who don't believe that you can actually find a great deal in New York. Look at this, uh, $10,000, $10,000, $10,000, 10,000, 9,500, um, 4,500, 5,000. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So let's go ahead and um, check out this one. Why not? So we have this property right here at $5,000. Uh, here's the picture that you can see here. And this is already a bank owned property. The lender has taken ownership of this property through a foreclosure auction for the amount of $5,000 um, because, you know, the property was not sold at auction. Probably nobody bid on it. And uh, the bank had no other choice but to take it back. And we don't see any statistics over here. We don't see any details, any data. So why don't we go and check out this map right here? And voila. So when you buy this property at 5,000, look at, at the value of the properties over here. So that will give you an estimate of what to expect to sell the house for in the event that you pick up this property for $5,000 and go in and do a nice flip and make it all pretty and sell it. Or you can do a nice flip and then just simply get it rent ready and have this become either your first rental or a nice addition to your real estate portfolio. And so the ranges that we see here on the higher end, we have 120 2000 and then on the low end the lowest i saw here was actually 52 thousand dollars unless i'm missing something but yeah that's the lowest number that i can see here so 52 and 122 
not bad for a $5,000 house that you can claim and make it look nice. And then as you scroll down, then you will have more details about this property over here. And of course you'll have the contact information. Usually for the most part, whenever the properties are taken back by the bank, you will find a realtor assigned to it. So you can actually reach out to the realtor and find out all there is about the house. Usually when there is at the auction stage, what you will find is the sheriff's information and where the auction is going to be held. And if it's within the pre-foreclosure state, you will most likely find the homeowner information. And depending on the laws of the state that you're planning to invest in, of course, you could uh, reach out to the homeowner and work out a deal that uh, becomes a win-win for the two of you. It becomes a win-win for the homeowner because why? They don't want to get into a foreclosure. They don't want to ruin their credit. They definitely don't want to have that mark because it's going to affect their lives forever. Even for a rental, they're going to have a hard time trying to qualify for a good rental home if they don't have credit. So they definitely don't want to go down that path. And what's the win-win situation for you? Well, you're getting your hands on a nice property at a discounted price. And also you're saving yourself a lot of headaches when it comes to renovating it and uh, money that could be invested in labor, right? So as you scroll down, once again, you'll find the contact information. And then as you scroll down, of course, you will find uh, help centers, right? So you'll have anything um, that's related to credit or credit repairs. Although at this point, I think this channel has provided you more than enough information. You can leverage um, Credit Karma or you can leverage the credit bureaus. For that, what I'm going to do is provide you a link to a couple of episodes where I've talked about Credit Karma and Experian.com as a way to help you better monitor your credit and work towards improving it down in the description box below. So don't forget to check those out. And of course, as you scroll down, you're going to find um, links that it's going to help you complement your research right here. So if you need to visit the site to learn more about the properties and learn more about what's going on in the area, you feel free to check out on the county site link here. And then uh, if you need help finding a uh, title agency to help you with the title search, you can search it right here. Um, once again, the documents, uh, the checklist, which are the ones that I just show you right here. And of course, if you want to learn about bankruptcy laws in New York and how to buy foreclosures in New York, so let's just click on here. That's the beauty about this, that they have a plethora of information. So it doesn't matter whether you reside in a state or not. If you are interested in a specific state, hey, you're more than welcome to check it out because even if you don't know much about it, this website will make sure that you have all that information really available for your learning. That's why I find this website to be extremely, extremely useful, very helpful compared to all the other websites that I've provided you in the past in prior YouTube videos. So they have a pretty robust platform and you can even download the apps onto your phone, whether it's on Google Play or from the app store. You can actually get that information really available in your phone to help you in the search, whether you're traveling or perhaps in a long commute. Hey, maybe you are essential staff if you're still watching this video in the middle of the pandemic and you have uh, a long way to go before you get to work. Or perhaps you're watching this episode two, three years down the road where hopefully uh, any issues related to the pandemic has been fixed and you're back to the regular routine. You can always check this out. That's the beauty about this website. It's not only good now um, during COVID times, but it's also excellent uh, any time of the year, regardless of the situation that you're in, you can always come here and access this website. Now, going all the way up to the top, there's one thing in particular I wanted to show. Uh, this is actually more beneficial to those who are looking to buy a home for homeowners and not so much for real estate investor. But hey, you can also come in and check this out if you're looking for ideas to make homes appealing for those who are looking to buy but are not ready to buy. So what exactly is a rent to home deal? So a rent to home deal, it's basically a, let's say a tenant that is interested in buying a home in a specific area, but are not entirely sure on whether they want to or they're ready for home ownership yet. So what they can do, they can work out a deal with their landlords and they say, hey, you know what? I do see myself living in this beautiful house long term, but I'm not sure if I'm quite ready yet. Is there a way we can work out some kind of rent to own deal where I could, you know, pay you rent and part of my rent it's going to contribute towards the down payment of this house. And maybe within two years, I can actually close on this house. You might be wondering why in the world would anybody want to do that? Hey, 
Once again, we're talking about home ownership. This is the only time where we're allowed to be emotional because we're looking to buy a home for ourselves, for our families to watch our children grow, right? And maybe at that point in time that you're interested in buying that house, you might not have the best credit possible. So what this will allow you to do is to sign a lease for maybe a year or two years, make your rental payments. And then part of that rental payment will serve as a contribution towards the down payment of your home. And that way you are locking this property from um, hitting the market, from other people coming in and bidding an offer on it. You're locking it for the next year or two. And that way you can take advantage of that time frame to work on your credit, improving it. Or why not maybe even um, gather more money for the down payment. So that way you can get to the closing readily available to get access to that property. So here is a list down here of all available properties that are uh, rent to owns. And what we're going to do, I want to check out California because this is quite interesting um, because a lot of people are saying, hey, I would love to buy a house in California. Although I'm not entirely sure given everything that's happening with the pandemic, if that's going to continue to happen. But let's assume today you are one of those families who are still believing in the economy in California and you want to buy a house in Los Angeles. So you can come in here and you're going to check in in Los Angeles, and I want to check out what are the houses that are really available for rent to own. So let's say I see this property right here in Long Beach, California, and it costs 401000 So you come in here, you check out the details, and look at this beautiful, beautiful apartment. It looks like it said it is a condo. So you come in here, look at this awesome and amazing kitchen, right? And um, the market value of this property sits at 446. It is currently sitting at 401. And it can rent out uh, to close to $2,000. Now, I want to confirm and just make sure you guys understand, rent to owns does not have anything to do with a housing foreclosure. This is a one-stop shop for everyone to gather and find good deals, whether you are a real estate investor looking for cheap deals or whether you're a homeowner looking to buy a house, but perhaps you're not ready today, but at the same time, you don't want to let that opportunity go. So uh, beautiful pictures, very nice pictures that you can check out. This is an excellent view right here that, as you can see. And um, if you're curious to see what's around in the vicinity, and check out the pricings. There you go. So you can find some properties within the same block that are worth $2.1 million, $1,636,000. So it quite varies. It is quite diverse. But this is one of those things that, hey, if you're interested in buying, you don't want to get your hands dirty with a flood because maybe you don't have the time. You have toddlers at home or maybe you have a very demanding career uh, or you just simply don't want to deal with a massive renovation because you just don't have the experience and you don't want the headache. So you can find all of that available here. Here. Rental price at twenty one hundred. Uh, for twenty one hundred, you can sign up a nice lease that it's gonna help you contribute money towards the down payment of your house and let you be ready to uh, close in this property. You know whether it's one or two years down the road. So um, definitely something for you to check out. Feel free to read at the posting. Rent to own. What is it about? And same thing over here, first steps to buying a rent to own home. For those who have never heard about this concept before, now you can do so by just simply expanding this box right here, then expanding the box further. And voila, look at all the plethora of information readily available for you, readily available for your research, for your learning. So that way, you know, you are well, very well educated and you know what you're walking yourself into. So as you scroll down, you will find the contact information and anything else you need to know about this property and some other suggestions around the area in the event that you're actually interested in looking into some of these properties. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, this is foreclosure.com. As you saw, it is an excellent tool, an excellent one-stop shop repository for you to not only find amazing deals, but also get uh, access to a lot of information in terms of learning to educate yourself into this new adventure. So we were able to negotiate a good seven day trial for your benefit, so you can actually check out uh, the services and hopefully you love, love, love using them and uh, stay forever on this platform so you can find the best deals possible. So yeah, to access the seven day trial, you have to sign up using our link down below, uh, which we will either add it to the description box below or just simply show you in the screen. So uh, feel free to check it out. And that is pretty much all I have for you today. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode and do not forget to check this link right here, which contains the free week trial 
for you to check out this amazing platform that is going to help you get access to all of these cheap houses available in the market without you having to leave the comfort of your home. And while I still have you here, do not forget to check this episode right here. That's going to help you complement everything you learned today. So that's pretty much it. I will see you guys soon. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.